from the stars like no other can. Bailey builds guitars with the wind and the sun. What do you think of our new intro then folks? Yeah. Massive thanks to Steve Adams for putting that together. Just goes to show what a professional can do, doesn't it? That would have taken me about a month. So massive thanks to Steve Adams there for our, um, our new intro. And uh, yeah, who knows what more surprises are to come. Hints. Some good ones. So yes, welcome, welcome, welcome to, folks to the Bailey Workshop on the Guitar Making Channel. Guitarmaking.co.uk is what it's all about. The Guitar Making Academy. Um, and today we'll be making the soundboard. I've already got a little way into it, as you can see here. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> today what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we got to this stage. I've already glued on back the um, bridge graph and the um I've got to interrupt you I've got to because just doing the intro now. no but people are saying it's really quiet it's really quiet I wouldn't interrupt you you know I would never you know I would never interrupt you unless it was important so they're saying <clears> it's really quiet looks completely normal well everybody's saying it's is the sound funny is the sound funny I'll turn it up a bit if you want, but, oh. but everything's the same as it always is. <clears throat> okay, let me... Um... They're all saying, so is Mark's mic, they're asking about your mic. Hello? It's, it's ambient on the, the strap. You've music. got yours on. Give us a minute. Give us a minute, folks. What is going on? See, it says it's working. I'll try again then. <clears throat> um, hello, hello, hello. Um, from our end, it looks everything looks like it's working perfectly. I can turn it up a bit. 
maybe um, there is a setting where you can turn the sound down. Hello? Uh, apparently my mic's fine. <laughs> yeah, the, um, maybe that's better. Oh, but you're standing by this mic, so go, go and stand over there. Right, let's try that. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, 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 hello. No. Mic one isn't working, you're right. But... Oh, I've got it. Yeah, it helps if you plug it in. <laughs> right, is it, is it too loud now? <laughs> now it's good. What a great start. Oh, We've ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> but you're glad I interrupted you, though. Right, cheers, Carol. Thanks, folks, for letting us know the audio was not working. It looked like it was working from here, but um, evidently not. Well, woo. <laughs> Anticlimax. Um, <clears throat> I hope you all enjoyed the intro. Welcome to the Bailey Workshop for the Guitar Making Channel, guitarmaking.co.uk. It is always this ropey, so get used to it. Today I'm going to be talking about making the soundboard. In fact, as you can see, I've already... Right, you're a bit loud now. You're too loud now. You're too loud now. Sorry. You turned it up, didn't you? You turned it up over here. Is that any better? You turned it up over here, didn't you? And you no, said, I didn't. Oh, well, you... OK, I thought you said you, it was louder than it was. No, I turned it up over here. Okay. So um, I'll carry on talking. You guys let me know if that's, if that's better. Um, as you can see, I've already done... Uh, that doesn't seem to work anymore. I've already done um, a bit of work on the soundboard. I've already um, started it. I've done the rosette, sound hole, and glued on... Um, the upper transverse graft and the bridge plate. So that's what you can see here in this arrangement. Um, so what I'm going to do today is glue on some more braces, the finger braces and the sound hole braces, and we'll talk all about making the soundboard. And I've taken pictures at every stage um, so that I can show you how we got to this arrangement here. So, um, another fantastic start. Everybody's Riveting introduction. <laughs> Thanks. What I was trying to say was, thank you to Steve Adams for our amazing new introduction. Isn't it amazing what a professional can do? <laughs> and then a couple of amateurs come along and screw it all up. Oh, you don't know how much I hate it when it goes wrong. Hopefully you can hear me now and everything sounds normal and I'm not too quiet and I'm not too loud. Yeah. They're, all, they're all happy now. Everybody's Hooray! Happy. Everybody's happy in the chat. Right, brilliant. Welcome everybody and thanks for letting us know. But at least they tell you, right? It's important to get it right. Yeah, so... <clears throat> do you want to say hello to everybody then? Well, hello. Whilst Mark so regain his composure, hello to everybody. There's already far too many people to um, say hello to. We've already got one question. Uh, from David uh, Gibbon. He's, uh, he's asked a question, but I'll save that until you've actually got a chance to do something, OK? Right. OK, so um, I've got a couple of announcements to make, but that will be later. So, um, hello and welcome. Welcome to our show. Right, I'm going to start taking these clamps off so I can show you um, what, exactly where we are. <clears throat> And then we'll do, um, you can ask me any questions you want, and then we'll do, uh, I'll show you the, the images of how we got to this point here. Yeah, so for those who don't know, this guitar here is um, a custom guitar that I'm making for a customer. This is Ricky's Big D Custom. So I'm taking, as you saw, there were blocks on top of these braces. That's to spread the weight of the clamps while we're 
glue in. So let's just take this off and have a look. This is actually braces that I glued on this morning. Um, I've had a really busy morning trying to get everything ready and then we cocked it all up. Completely normal. But there is an optimum time for cleaning up the glue and I glued this about 20 minutes, half an hour ago. So now is the optimum time. Cleaning up the excess glue. If you can see that, there's just, just a lovely perfect amount of glue squeeze out there. If we clean it up when it's too wet, then we end up just spreading glue everywhere. Um, so it's better to leave it until it's just gone leather hard and then we clean it up. So as you see, that took just seconds to clean up because I put the right amount of glue on. If I'd put too much glue on, then I'd probably still be here for another five or 10 minutes cleaning up the glue. There we are. So here's my the current state of play with my soundboard. So yesterday I put the rosette in. Nice herringbone rosette. The little gap there, that's where the fretboard covers it up so we don't worry about that. So this is the standard rosette. Crisp. Still a little bit of sanding to do on it. But as you can see it looks pretty looks pretty crisp. Beautiful. So that's our standard herring bone, bone rosette. If you order a kit from us then um, it'll be a Sitka spruce top and the standard rosette is the herringbone rosette which is supplied um, and it's already pre-bent for you. What we do is I make up, I make up these with um, rosettes ready for you um, and then as you'll see in the pictures in a minute there's kind of three pieces to it. So those guys those of you that have bought kits already, you'll know this, but this is what you get with the rosette for the kit. So it's pre-bent, should be reasonably easy to install and just fits into a quarter inch slot. We'll get to that in a minute. So the first thing I did was obviously I joined it and then I cut the rosette. Put the rosette in and then the rest of the work is going to be on the inside. So... Um, Actually, even just marking it all out takes a bit of time. And obviously I've done work over the years on the, on the design. I'm not sure if you can see the pencil lines there. You can just about see the layout. Um, so this is my Dreadnought design. Um, the way we get to this the layout of these braces is all explained on the course. So if you go to guitarmaking.co.uk, you'll see that what we've done over the last five years, we've put together <clears throat> my Guitar Making Academy, which contains build your own courses and design your own courses, and also some master classes and some shorter courses. So um, the big thing is the design and build your own guitars. So design and build your own electric or acoustic. What we do is we start with a blank piece of paper, draw a centre line, and then every decision you make represents another line until you end up with a finished design. So um, there's hours and hours worth of material to go through, depending on what you've chosen for your design. But it shows you how to lay out this bracing pattern um, for any guitar, any shape you want. So I'm not going to go through how we do all that today, but if you want to know how to do that, then you need to go and um, 
you can sign up for free and join the free community and um, we'll put the link up at the end and um, if you want to become a premium member then that's basically how we make our living that's what supports us and keeps us going allows us to do these live streams and make all the other videos um, our premium members keep us going so massive thanks to you guys so premium members get access to all the premium courses um, past present and future <clears throat> and you also get um, a few of the goodies like discount in the shop and that kind of thing so head over to guitarmaking.co.uk, become a premium member, and then you'll get you'll be able to download, and there's a whole free set of patterns for the acoustic and electric guitar to download. But I also go through with you step by step exactly how to come up with your own bracing design. So that is what it's all about. It's about teaching you, not just giving you a fish, but teaching you how to fish. <laughs> or something like that. Is that. I don't think that's the... Thing, you know the one. <laughs> Give a man a fish, and and, um, and he'll <laughs> eat it. Teach a man to fish, and uh, and he'll catch more fish. Okay, Mark. I think now you might maybe you should answer some questions now. To get Starting to sound like George Bush. You're start what century are you from? Right, Go on, let's do some questions right. then before I um, move on. What we're going to do is I'm going to show you the slideshow of how I got to this point, which won't take long, hopefully. And then I'm going to glue on the next set of braces. Um, we're here every Wednesday and Saturday. What day is it today, Carol? Saturday, it's Super Saturday. <laughs> so as it's Saturday today, um, this will be part one of the soundboard and we'll be doing part two of the soundboard on Wednesday. So, um, yeah, so this is Ricky's Big D custom build. Um, we're on part six. I forgot to put the number up in the, um, in the corner there. I forgot to put the number up today, but I'll do that when I've finished. Right. But we've already done, let me just finish, Carol. We've already done um, I've already made the back and the sides. So if you want to know how we did that, go back and watch the previous live streams. Also the neck and the fretboard as well. So what we're doing is we're making all the individual parts separately. And then probably next Saturday, certainly won't be too long, is when we start gluing it all together. So we make the separate parts, the back, the sides and the top, and then we start assembling it. And then when we've got the box together, then we can attach the neck. And then after that, it's all downhill. So if, you're in, if, if any of that's interesting and what you're into, then make sure to subscribe, hit the like button and all the YouTube stuff. Go on, Carol. Right, well, actually, that, that's led into nicely into some questions. So the, let's ask the very first question. So we've got Dave Gibbon in the workshop. Hello, Dave, and can I thank you for your letter? I've got a new pen pal, folks. Um, he wrote me a beautiful letter. Absolutely fantastic handwriting. Um, and I do, honestly, letters, they are, they may be a thing of the past, but they shouldn't be because they're wonderful. So anyway, Dave Gibbon, he asked, um, he's, he's said he's really enjoying um, working his way through the acoustic course. He's watching it, um, it you know, he's, he's joined as a premium member and he's enjoying it. Um, what well, He's got a question about the neck joint and he said, do, do you do the neck joint in a different order um, if you're doing a bolt on neck or a dovetail? Well, not really. The only difference is, I need to go and grab a piece of wood. I'll do it while I'm talking. The only difference is, um, we, with the bolt-on version, we can do, um, we can actually cut the mortise before we glue it in. I'll show you what I mean if I can find. If I can find a block, here's one. This is, um, I'm going to keep moving through the... This is my life, looking cameras. through boxes. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, so if I show you the, the guitar again, inside here, there's going to be a tail block. As you can't really see, move it up a bit. Tail block. I'll zoom out a little bit. 
and the heel block. So, um, tail block and heel block. So these are just tail block and heel block blanks. Um, these are just blanks. There's a bit of work to do before they're actually finished heel blocks and tail blocks. So these are just square blocks of wood ready to be made into um, the heel block and the tail block. To be honest, the tail block, all we do is we round off a couple of the corners, check that it's sitting square, job done. With the, um, with the heel block, then um, I actually cut the mortise first before we glue it into the guitar. If I'm doing a dovetail neck, then I cut the mortise um, I cut the mortise after. Let me see if I've got a body. I went the wrong way. Yeah, so um, Peter Johnson suggested that uh, that I have a lapel mic. I don't. I don't think it's a good idea. We're saving up. So this is, um, yeah, this is one that's going to be dovetailed. And so, um, as you can see, the mortise isn't cut yet. That's just where the sides don't quite join up. And that's all going to be hidden by where the neck joins on. In the end, I'm going to cut a slot out, a dovetail slot here for the neck. Um, but we do that into the body. Um, that's the same as we do with arch top guitars as well. Um, we make the body and then we cut the mortise, and then we fit the neck into the mortise. So that's the order of events. Hopefully that makes some kind of sense to you. So if you're making a bolt-on neck, um, the, it's a lot simpler joint, and so it's just a straight slot. So I like to do that in, into the block first, and then glue the block in. And that's how we do it on the online course. So I, I guess um, I'll just make a point that, um, the online course is targeted to people who haven't got a million pounds and a shed full of tools. So just like me, when I started, I had virtually nothing. And I had to started by making all my own clamps and stuff. It's one of mine. Um, I used to make all my own tools and stuff like that. Gradually, as the years have gone by, I've, I've bought bits and bobs. And now I've got, you know, every guitar making widget known to man. Um, but but the, the course is aimed at people like me who didn't have a load of money and a load of tools when they started. So um, obviously you do need some tools, um, but I, I've targeted, I've aimed it at the kind of like doing it with the bare minimum of expense, the bare minimum of tools and the bare minimum of jigs and all that kind of thing. So I've shown you, for instance, I showed you the sides that were in the moulds on the course, I show you um, how to do it without the moulds, so you don't have to go to that expense. Um, and that's basically what it's all about. Go on, Carol. Right, OK, so um, uh, uh, Rick Dunatal um, asks, your top looks flat. Is, is it not dished? Ah, that's another good one. Oh, I didn't look, I didn't put, sorry, I didn't put my mic on. Uh, so Nick Natal, Nick, Rick Dunatal <coughs> asked, uh, your top looks flat. Is it not dished? That's another brilliant question. Thanks for that. Who was that? Uh, Rick de Natal over in the US. Rick de Natal. Cheers, Rick. Um, it's a really good question. Um, this is what they call a flat top acoustic guitar. But you will notice that um, here's one, it's a different shape, but it's exactly the same construction. If I put something flat on it, maybe you can see that it's, it's not actually flat. You can see there is a curve on it. Whoops. It's difficult to hold. Um, can you see that slight curve? Yeah. Now the curve is only gentle on the front. A bit more of a curve on the back usually. But it's weird that it's called a flat top guitar, but it isn't flat. So the reason it's called a flat top guitar is because um, the actual rim is flat. So when you're making the sides, show you the side again. If you watch um, a previous, I think it might be just the last live stream actually where I'm 
putting on the curved lining. This is flat, this surface. This surface around here is, is level and flat. And so what we do is to get the curve, we, we make the soundboard is going to be curved and that's glued onto the top. So although the soundboard's curved, it's called a flat top acoustic. The reason there is a small curve is because it adds a lot of strength and also it gives room for the wood to expand and contract. So if you imagine this was perfectly flat like a drum skin, if you took your guitar to a dry environment, um, leave it in the car or something, um, then the top shrinks and it would actually split really easily. So the, the main reason it's actually curved is, um, is to avoid splits when it dries out. So it's a flat top acoustic, the rim is flat, but the top's actually got a very slight curve on it. Um, hopefully that makes some kind of sense. Um, and as you spotted, Ricky, this, at the moment, it is sitting flat. Um, what we do is, if I show you the back, to get a curve, here's my back, show you the curve on that. So this is Ricky's back. You can see the curve on it. So what we did was I made the braces, as you'll see if you watch the live stream, the braces are curved. It's a bit dark there. Um, it's these braces that are curved. I don't know if you can see that. So the plate is actually flat and it only gets its curve by being glued to these curved braces. Okay. So notice on the back is very simple. It's only, this is what we call ladder bracing, very simple bracing. The front is a lot more complicated. In this case, we're using um, X bracing. So there's going to be these. Uh, there's going to be these big X braces there, um, and a whole pattern of braces. It's a bit of a strange shape, but the more you learn about guitar making, the more you appreciate just how clever these guys were that came up with these designs. Um, so some of these braces are curved, but they don't all need to be. Um, these ones that I'm putting on now, upper face brace, X braces, lower face braces, are all curved braces. So, um, we don't glue those on yet. Let's take those and put them to one side because the first thing we do when we're making an acoustic top is we glue on, um, when we're bracing an acoustic top is we glue on the flat braces. So um, a lot of these braces are quite small, short, um, as opposed to like uh, the big fat ones. So these big fat ones are gonna be curved and the small skinny ones don't need to be. So finger braces, sound hole brace is gonna go there. Your bridge graft, what's this called? Bridge plate and your upper transverse graft. They're all what we call the flat braces. So these are what we call the flat braces. The ones I showed you earlier are what we call the curved braces. Um, and what we do is we glue the flat braces on first, then we shape them, and then we glue on the curved braces. So today I'm basically going to be gluing on um, the rest of my flat braces. And if there's time, I'll show you um, how we shape them. Um, as you can see, we glue them on fairly chunky. I always glue them on square like this because it's a much easier to put the clamps on. But the final shape, it's going to be like a pyramid shape and so um, you know, I reckon about 50% of this material is removed. 
yeah, probably more than 50% actually, by the time you've carved it and shaped it. We'll see, maybe one of you mathematicians can work it out. But hopefully today we'll get this glued on, maybe if, if there's time we'll even carve one. If there's not time to carve it today, then we'll, we'll be doing that on Wednesday. Okay, so there might be three parts to make in the top, but we'll see, we'll see what we can get done today. Go on, Carol. Right, well, it's just that um, uh, there was a question earlier on from Rock and Roller 912. Hello, hello to you. Um, uh, he asked the question, how thick is the bridge plate? The bridge plate is one eighth of an inch thick. Um, if you want the dimensions for all of these braces, then it's included in the plans and you'll have to become a premium member to get them all. So I'm not going to go through all the dimensions of all of these braces. Um, one thing you could do is just buy a plan from somewhere else. I mean, um, that's one option. Eighth of an inch thick, the bridge plate, and it's going to be rosewood or maple. OK, thank you. And uh, next, Eddie Cameron, um, he asked, uh, do, you, do you write in the guitar? Um, where, and where, where do you write if you write something? Always write Lovely in the question. guitar. It's the law. Um, you can write an insult to the customs officers that are going to scan it. <laughs> you can write a joke, a poem or a proverb. That's what we do here. Um, apart from the first one. <laughs> and I also write the date inside. And... Um, the, the builder, the name of the builder, because obviously in here um, we run courses, people come from all over the world to my little workshop in the hills of Ayrshire, or at least they used to until lockdown occurred, um, which is the main reason I'm now on YouTube doing this. <laughs> so thanks, coronavirus. Um, Yes, I'm just going to show you where we write then inside the guitar. I don't normally do it until I've got the sides on. Um, what I'll do if I'm building a guitar for somebody else, then, well, I usually am. <laughs> Let's face it, 99.9% of the guitars I've made have been for somebody else. Um, then I ask them what they want me to write inside. So I, I always sign it and um, obviously if somebody is here on a course building a guitar then they get to sign it being the maker. So the maker's name, the date and a joke, a proverb, a poem or an insult to the customs officers that are <laughs> going to scan it. <laughs> and I write it um, basically in this bit between You've got a finger brace here and your X brace. So I would wait until the braces are glued on myself. I usually do anyway. And then I write it in there. Whatever I'm going to write goes in there. Take a picture of it, send it to my um, customer and uh, everybody's happy. So yeah, you can dedicate your guitar to somebody. A dedication, that's another thing you can write. There's been some really beautiful things, right? Yeah, people have written some pretty amazing stuff in there. Um, you've got another question about you about the bridge plate, Mark. Okay. So Sebastian uh, over in Ireland, hello. He asked, "What is there a reason why the bridge plate corners are cut? You know, it's sort of on an angle there." Yeah. Well, the thing is that these these what we call the flat braces, obviously they're all flat, but the top's going to have to have flex a little bit. So. They need to be a little bit flexible, which is why they're so thin. So the thinner they are, the more flexible. Um, nipping the corners like this, um, it, it helps it become a little bit more flexible so it doesn't go, it's not quite so big. It makes the bridge plate a little bit smaller. And also, there's going to be another brace there. Now, some people actually fit their bridge plate into the brace. Um, so I, I guess the, the honest answer there is um, it's, it's what I like. It's my, my um, preference. I guess the answer is it's my preference. You don't, you don't need to, um, you don't need to do that. I have seen some builders where this just goes straight across. So you don't need to cut the corners off. I just like to do it because it makes the bridge plate a little bit smaller 
gives me a little bit more flexibility in the top and it doesn't interfere with my lower face brace. Okay. Um, just on that, Mark, uh, Number Cruncher says that uh, maybe what we need is a resource in the forum of uh, custom officer insult jokes. Um, yeah. for them to use. Right? So I don't recall you ever saying that. No, before. let's keep it nice. I've never heard you say we that. We want to keep the forum a place of um place of loveliness. Yes. So no no we don't have any um bad behaviour on the forum. And, and how would Only custom, nice people. How would they see it? I don't understand. I've never heard you say that before. When they scan it when it goes through the machine. But how can they see inside? Because they scan it the with writing. an X ray machine. What and that pulls the writing out. And the pencil shows up, doesn't it? Because it? it's graphite. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. <clears throat> so um I don't know, it's my theory. I think you made that up. Matt Tomon has got a question. Um he's asked what is the difference between an arch top and a flat top then? Um, an arch top is a completely different instrument. Um maybe we'll that's a good subject for a, a live stream. Um unfortunately I can't just rustle one up at the moment because I've sold all mine. <laughs> and uh I'm not currently making one, although I might have some plates. If you bear with me, I might be able to put my hand on a part made one. So an arch top guitar is completely different. It's a completely different instrument. Um, the only relations really are, um, it's got the same scale length, same number of strings. But to me, um, it's more like a cello than a guitar. So here's a, here's an arch top plate. Let's see if I can get you a better. You can see how it's shaped. Um, available for sale, by the way. All you've got to do is contact Carol Put your name down on it. <laughs> Sometimes I build guitars on spec, hoping that someone will buy one, but um, I can't do that very often because it, it costs so much money to make a guitar and it takes so much time. Um, I can't do that very often. But this is one that I started um, in the hope that someone will come in and um, put some money down on it. Um, but you can see the difference is um, the strength of an arch top comes built into the wood. So this started life as an inch and a quarter thick um, piece of spruce. Actually, it's only really needs to be that thick in the middle. So it usually comes wedge shaped. It's always wedge shaped, to be honest, as you can see. It doesn't need to be that thick at the edges. So you get a wedge, two wedges, glue them together and then cut your shape out and you carve the outside shape first and then we carve the inside shape. As you can see, this one's still in progress. Um, and this one's just rough carved. So this is the back has got even more of an arch on it. So that's an arch top guitar. That's the difference. On the back of an arch top guitar, there's no braces at all. On the front, of an arch top guitar, there are just two braces. They're called parallel braces. <laughs> They're not parallel. Typical, isn't it? They go something like that. So that's that's how an arch top guitar goes inside. Um, hit the like button, folks. <laughs> Where else can you get this? There you go. Right, you've, you've still got some questions coming in. Can I ask a couple more questions? So um, I just want to note that the, the braces on a, an arch top, they're called parallel braces, but they're not parallel. There's a slight brace. There's a slight um, angle on them. And it's basically going from the, the end of the neck there and it goes underneath the feet of the bridge to give some strength. So that's, ba that's basically how an arch top guitar works. And um, the, the actual way it produces sound is completely different from a flat top guitar. So I think of them as completely different instruments. So I hope you enjoyed that little explanation. I did. <laughs> I got well, to well, show off my arch top, didn't I? Well, 
whilst you're there um, talking about braces, uh, David Buckner, hello David, he has asked, um, can you tell us a bit about scalloping? Scalloping braces. braces. Right. When you pluck a string, it will ring a certain note. If you loosen the string, it reduces the, um, the resonant frequency. You get a lower note. Or um, enhanced bass, let's say. <laughs> the same works with a guitar top. So if we glue on these super chunky braces, remember how I said that um, we glue them on square because it's much easier for the clamps. But then we carve them. And we carve them into a nice, even, parabolic arch shape, both ways. Nice, even, parabolic arch shape. Um, and that's rough carved. Um, then what we do is we reduce the size of the braces until we have achieved the required um, tap tone the required strength necessary. We're trying to weaken the guitar so that it's resonant, but not too weak so that it falls apart. But at the same time, as you're removing material from the brace, it's like turning that string down. It's like um, lowering the resonant frequency. And so basically, a scalloped brace, you, you would, um, I would get what I would consider to be a balanced shape and sound, and then you scallop the braces, you're further weakening the braces to enhance the bass. <laughs> that's the long-winded answer. Yeah, that's the kind of um, short answer. So if you want an... Um, a, like a nice natural balanced sound don't scallop the braces you don't need to um, if you want to enhance the break the bass then you go ahead and scallop the braces and what you're doing is you're you're just weakening the braces further um, and you would basically do it in in this area of the guitar on the chunky braces here um, so the lower face braces and the x braces can be scalloped Scalloping, if you're not sure what it means, it just means um, instead of a nice curved shape, we start with that and then we take a chunk out to um, um, make what we call a scalloped shape. Um, and it, it's to enhance the bass. So if you just want, I mean, these kind of guitars are quite bassy anyway. So um, I usually find it's not necessary. When I'm designing a guitar with somebody, for instance, Ricky, when we went through all the spec of this guitar, um, I, I asked him whether he wanted um, scalloped braces. Um, what I asked him was, he, would he like a balanced sound or would he want um, to, an enhanced bass? And he said balanced. So that gives me my answer. We don't scallop the braces. Hopefully that helps you out. Oh, listen, I've just got to tell you this, right? Um... Good question, by the way. Thank you for that. Can't find it right, but um, uh, B Power is saying that his wife can't. She's a math, math. She's a mathematician. She can't stand the fact that there are parallel braces that aren't parallel, and triangular things that aren't triangular. It's just welcome not... to the world of guitar making. <laughs> it will drive you nuts. <laughs> um, you've still got some questions, okay? Um, yeah. Um, the I didn't. I forgot to mention as well that um, arch top guitars, they can be X braced. So you will occasionally see an arch top guitar with um, with X braces, but it's not really the done thing, and it's um, it's frowned upon by uh, top end arch top makers. We prefer parallel style brace, which is much much more like a a cello or something. Parallel braces. <laughs> <laughs> that aren't parallel. Flat top guitars that aren't flat. Yeah, welcome to the world of guitar making. Right, 
I've got loads of questions, right? I can't keep it. Right, so, um, Peter Johnson, right? Hi, Peter. We're going to have to move my mic to near the laptop because I, I struggle to... I can't see that... I can't actually talk into the mic and... We need to get you a lapel mic, don't we? Ah, that's what Peter Johnson says, but I'm not sure. I, I think you'll hear, just hear me swearing and muttering all the time. Just anyway, order one. Order it. Right, here we go. So, he said... How does the bracing differ for the pickups and greater tension of electric guitar strings? Shall we deal with that later? That's an, is that an electric guitar question? Oh no, it isn't. How does the bracing differ? I'm not sure what, what you mean by the question. No, so well, can, Peter, can you follow up with that? Um, <laughs> You've also, so back back to Archtop. Need so, more input. So Rick Rick De Natal said so basically in essence then an Archtop is car front and back, and a three three five style is, is sort of somewhere between an Archtop and an acoustic. Again, the three three five again is another I consider it again another completely different instrument. I guess they're all in the same family of guitars, but um, to cut another long story short, a three three five style um, instead of starting with solid wood the top and the back are made by laminating um, in fact I've got one here so our friend Darren it's time to give bagpress.com a mention <laughs> we're not affiliated in any way by the way um, but Darren's your guy for this kind of stuff, which is, um, this is made in a bag press. So a vacuum press. Um, I'll keep turning it until we can see the shape. Um, but, but basically a 335 is made. Uh, you can just about see the guitar shape in there. 335 is made by laminating up. So you can see this is made by um, I think it's three pieces, 1.5 mil thick each. Maple, poplar, maple. That's what we're doing. 16th of an inch thick each piece. So that's a 335. And um, again, there are variations. There, there's variations on all these. Um, so um, don't take what I say is set in stone. But what they do with a 335 is they've got. Um, a solid central stick so the front isn't really flexible like a arch top so it's, it's really they are completely different um, I try not to compare them um, because they are so different I, I think of them as completely different instruments hopefully that makes some kind of sense Right, no, okay, so I, what, what it's me that's um, lacking, because what Peter was, let me read, Peter, the, 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 what I just read out was the second part of the question, that's why it didn't make sense. So okay. the first part was, he's thinking of an electric acoustic build, sort of like White Falcon sort of style, um, and this is why he was asking about the Florentine cutaways last time. So his question about the strings and the electric... You're talking about do, like a Gretsch style. Yeah, that's what the question about the strings was, about the bracing. Bracing when you're when you're making that style of guitar. Mm. I'm That's not entirely like a, sure what style of guitar. Is that more mean? like a 335 though, a, a, white, a white falcon? Is that not laminated? A white falcon is a Gretsch, isn't it? Yeah, so, it's sort of like a laminated um, style. Gretsch again is another, um, is one of the variations is a Gretsch. Um, the white falcon, the exact construction methods of the white falcon couldn't tell you to be honest my guess is it's more closely related to a 335 um, and you know I believe that Gibson also did make larger arch top style guitars with laminated tops like this so you can make an arch top guitar with this kind of top as well and I think that's probably what the White Falcon is. So it's probably this kind of top, um, I'm imagining. Um, so limited bracing needed. 
Uh, I know that Gibson did make, you, you know, deeper, like a 335 is quite shallow and it's got that solid core. I know they made a, a deeper version um, which didn't have the solid core and that was like an arch top style. Um, the bracing for that though, I can't tell you off the top of my head. I don't know. Um, I would imagine that the back doesn't need any bracing at all because it's laminated like this. It'll be plenty strong enough. And the front, if it does need any bracing, probably more than likely the parallel brace style. Although you'll probably find X brace ones as well. So probably braced similar to an arch top, but without, you know, I've never seen inside a White Falcon, so um, I can't tell you exactly. But yes, um, I believe the Gretches are laminated in a similar fashion to a 335, but they're deeper, so there's no solid central thing. Um, instead, it will be braced similar to an arch top. Hopefully that's... Um, best I can answer that one anyway so cheers okay listen I've lost track of the question so people <laughs> if you've asked a question yeah. earlier on you'll just need and I haven't said it we're getting too many questions folks right, so but, um but Mark I'm here that, to tell that is you brilliant. that Ricky Ricky Allen's just come in yeah He's in the, hi Ricky the workshop he said have I missed anything <laughs> only when I dropped it ah. <laughs> Fib. Show, me, show me the rosette though you hear that what the hell is that that's a motorbike Someone's going mental on a motorbike. Well, um, Mark, yeah. show, him, show him the rosette. All right, okay, Ricky. Um, what I'm going to do now then is uh, show you how we got to this point. So this is where I'm at now. I'm going to show you now the little slideshow um, of how we got to this point here. Yeah, I, I'm about... Uh, by the end of today, I'll be halfway through making the soundboard. We'll finish the soundboard on Wednesday. So thanks for tuning in for that. Good to see you, Ricky. Looking good, eh? There's your rosette. And... Uh, <laughs> Ricky said that's him outside. He's on his, he's on his way. <laughs> <laughs> Can you guys hear that? That's amazing. That was super, I thought it was a jet. I thought it was a low flying yeah. fighter. Right, so. Right, can I just interrupt, Mark? Go right. on then. So there are, there are, there's all sorts of questions that have just come in the chat and I can't keep up. So yeah. can we show, can you show your slideshow whilst I catch up with questions and then we'll do questions after you've. Okay, yeah, and I just want to say as well, um, we are busy today. There's a, a lot more questions, probably more than we'll get to today. So, um, if we don't, the place to go is guitarmaking.co.uk. Um, head over to the forum and you can ask your question there. Um, or stick, it, stick your question in the comments down below and we will get to them as, as many as we can. OK, um, we can't get to them all today live because I think there's going to be too many. Uh, can you thank Sebastian? He's sent us a super chat. That's really cool. Oh, thanks, Sebastian. Thank you. That's a beer. We'll have a beer Rock later. Rock and roll. Hopefully the sun will come out. Yep. Yeah. We'll have a beer tonight then. Cheers for that. Right, so. Um, Are you going to show the... Yeah. I'm going to show you now the some pictures to show you how we got to this point here. So, um, just put me in. Um, at this point, obviously, I've already joined it together. If you want to know how we join the pieces, then... Um, you'll need to become a, a member and then I'll, I'll go through every stage of the, the job right from starting with the rough blanks, joining the pieces. I've already done that here and, uh, and that's my template there. So, um, I've, I've made a template with all the braces drawn on, but you don't need to do that. Um, and then the first thing we do is uh, is the rosette. So here what I've done is I've marked the centre of the rosette and um, punched it and then we drill it with uh, 
a three mil drill. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to route a circle for the rosette. So to, um, to get a nice clean cut, I've sealed that surface there just in the area of the rosette. And that's one of the little tips we do. If you don't do that, then when you run the route around, you get like a really furry edge and um, you don't get such a clean line between the rosette and the wood. So we seal it first. Um, and then there's me drilling the hole. And so what I've got is a, a base on my router with three mil holes drilled in it at various intervals. And so I'm using the same drill, three mil drill, and it fits into one of those holes that's drilled into the base. So you drop the router down onto the pin and then it just pivots around the pin and draws a circle. As you can see, there's lots of holes that are drawn there. So I can do all sorts of different size circles from ukuleles to um, three ring rosettes or whatever it is I want to do. Um, that is also included on the course, how to make that thing and a, a little pattern for that if you want to make your own. It's not something that you can actually buy. You have to kind of make your own. So it depends on the router that you've got. Um, very handy little tool for making the rosettes. There are other ways to do it, but this is definitely the fastest. What I've done there is marked out the sound hole and the little quarter inch slot where I'm going to route for the rosette. So obviously check twice, cut once. I've marked it all out very carefully so that I don't end up with a wrong size sound hole or rosette slot. And that's the router spinning round and cutting the slot. There's the slot when it's finished. Absolutely beautiful. Brings tears to my eyes, that does. <laughs> Look how crisp it is. So um, yeah, a nice sharp cutter helps. Um, that's just an ordinary quarter inch router cutter. What I've done is I've, as I showed you, the, the rosette that we supply in the kit, it's made to just fit into a simple quarter inch slot. So that's our standard rosette. Um, as I say, I pre-bend the, the pieces first. And they, you can see them there, pre-bend. And then installed. Making sure to get glue on all the surfaces. Can be a bit frantic, but the um, number one rule of gluing is uh, don't panic. There it is all glued in. If you look carefully, you can see that it is just very, very slightly proud of the surface of the wood, which means it's sticking up just a little bit. So this was a question we had last time is, um, why don't you glue it in so it's perfectly level? Um, the, well, the answer is that it's impossible to do that. Um, you're better off gluing it so it's just slightly proud and then we scrape down or sand down until it's level with the surface. So that's what we do there. And there's a close up just to show you it just sticking up slightly proud. So this is the next day. Notice the lighting's changed there. Sorry about that, Steve. <laughs> the lighting's changed. I need to get more professional with me lighting. But there I'm using a, just an ordinary blade there to scrape. Um, that's one of my best kept guitar making secrets. Or not best kept. Because <laughs> I keep giving them all away. Using a blade as a scraper is fantastic. Super accurate and um, an easy way to just remove that little bit of excess. Here's the router again using the same method to cut the sound hole which if you're interested is four inches in diameter. And there it is. So that is the, um, the rosette and the sound hole done. Um, what I did after that was cleaned it up a bit and turned it over and I marked it all out for um, doing the braces on the inside. And then as you saw this morning, gluing on the first two braces. So notice those X braces that are on there, they're only on 
they're not actually glued they're just temporarily in place just so that I can line, line up my bridge plate so um, the most important brace in the guitar I think is this bridge plate what it does eventually it's going to connect the X braces to the upper face brace here so if you imagine that's how it finishes up so this is where the input from the strings comes from vibrational input from the strings travels down the X braces into this brace which is the most solid brace in the guitar and this is where the sound the fretboard goes and the neck goes and that great big block the heel block so this is all solid doesn't move and then the X braces are braced off of that you see so that's kind of how it works and it all depends on these on this bridge plate being in the right place so I very carefully clamped these on this morning so that I could line up my bridge plate and glue it in place um, and I think that's the most tricky brace to glue because if it moves then you're going to end up with your, your X braces all wonky you don't want that so um, yeah that's the most difficult brace to do I think and um, once that's done everything else is easy this bracing pattern incidentally um, it kind of creates itself if you know the formula which I go through on the on the um, on the courses um, you can make this bracing the X this X bracing design fit any shape you want any guitar and I'll show you how to do that all in the course so let's do something um, what I'm gonna do next then now I've taken you up to now I've brought you up to scratch with where we are now. Um, what I'm going to do now is glue on the rest of the X braces. Uh, sorry, the rest of the flat braces. What I'm going to do next is glue on the rest of the flat braces. So as I mentioned earlier, the flat braces are all the small ones. They don't need to be curved. Um, there's enough flexibility in the top. They don't need to be curved. Um, all of the chunkier braces, lower face brace, upper face brace and X braces will all be curved. So let's just draw these on. Um, finger braces. They're there to take up the um, any slack between the X brace is but to brace this area of the guitar. So there's four of them and they're, they're actually parallel to the X braces there. They don't go all the way to the edge, they actually finish three eighths of an inch or about nine mil from the edge. So I've got a piece of wood here that's three eighths of an inch. I can use that. Um, while I'm there, I'm going to do mark the um, lower face braces. Don't go to the edge either. But the X braces do, and the upper face brace does. So I'm going to mark on the um, sound hole braces. So it goes about three sixteenths of an inch or four and a half mil from the edge of the sound hole there. I'm trying to make this and this roughly even. Um, and then I don't even need to measure. I can just use the brace itself to mark the center line there. And then I can mark the other one exactly the same. So I'm kind of using a brace as a ruler there copy it so it's the same on both sides um, ok 
go. So these all need to be cut. I want you to just notice that um, I want you to notice which way the grain's going. Where did that go? There. So, uh, I don't, can you see that? Let's see if we can see that on camera three with a close up lens. Um, all of these braces have got vertical grain. See the grain always goes upwards, never from side to side. So it's quarter sawn. Um, so whenever you're marking the braces, make sure that you've got the grain sticking up at 90 degrees to the top. Um, remember what I said about when, when we glue the rosette on, then um, it was sticking up slightly proud. It was sticking up slightly proud and we scrape it back. So some of these braces, um, the sound hole braces are gonna be fitted. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue, glue them on slightly too long. And then we trim them back as we fit the X braces to the sound hole braces. So these are a bit longer than the final dimensions. Um, it's my little Japanese saw there that I'm using to cut the braces. Um, where did that go? Like that. Okay, so finger braces. These are sound hole braces, and the, here's your finger braces. Um, what I was getting at was they go over the line because we're gonna trim them back and fit these braces to them. And it's much easier, rather than try and get it perfect straight away, it's much easier to um, make them a little bit too long and then trim them back until they are perfect. I just marked that one on the wrong side because the grain's going the wrong way. I need to make sure that the grain's sticking up this way so it's there. I'm going to mark the, um, the length of these finger braces and it's a good idea to number them. One. I'll just cut them as I go. One, remember I mentioned these would finish before the edge. They finish before the edge, but they go slightly over the line here. So, two. Last one. Four.
these are ready for gluing but we always um, we always dry clump first and also I like to just clean up the um, the gluing face with some fine sandpaper and then a quick scrape So the reason we scrape is to get rid of any um, sanding scratches. You get a lovely smooth surface ready for gluing. So I'll just quickly do that. making sure all the surfaces are clean free from dust we're ready for gluing So how many you glue at once depends on obviously how many clamps you've got. You can use the go bar deck for this. Um, I showed you the go bar deck when we were making the back. So um, yeah, if you want to know about that, you can watch that one making the back. And I do show you a couple of images of the go bar deck. Um, in this case, I'm going to do it all on, on the bench here. So um, just using ordinary, the wooden clamps that I showed you earlier. So if you're building an acoustic guitar, obviously, like I said, you do need some tools. Um, for gluing the braces on, I recommend these. I recommend you get two small, two medium, and two long, and you'll be able to build your entire guitar with that. Um, you might see me using more than six clamps because basically I've got a bucket full, so I'll use as many as I've got. But you, you only actually need, I think you can, well, I know that you can build the whole guitar with just six of these. Two of the small ones, two of the medium, and, uh, and two of the extra long ones. Um, if you want to know more about what tools you need to build a guitar, I did make a video on that, essential tools for guitar making, and then there's another one, extra tools for making acoustic guitars. So check out those two videos if you're not sure about what tools you need. Um, but of course, as you all know, we always, um, we always check twice um, and cut once. Um, and that extends to gluing. We always dry clamp before we go for a glue. So I'm gonna dry clamp this up, which basically means putting the clamps on, but no glue. And what it does is it, it means that, um, basically means that I've got all my clamps ready. I haven't got to go running around the workshop looking for clamps whilst um, the glue's drying. So let me just go ahead and dry clamp. And then we'll glue it. I'm, I'm pretty sure the way it's going that I'm not going to be carving these braces today. But we'll see. We'll have to do it on um, Wednesday if we don't get it done today. So dry clamping. It doesn't really matter where we start. Um, one thing you can do is you don't have to use wooden clamps. You can use any clamps. So um, as I've got these, I'm going to use these as well. Let's duplicate it on the other side. So dry clamping, you'd be surprised. 
just how many of these braces you can glue at the same time if you've got enough clamps. Obviously if you haven't you can just glue one at a time if you want. We'll just glue half the braces that I'm doing. So dry clamping like this means that I haven't got to go running around the workshop looking for clamps while the glue's drying, like I said. But it also gives us a chance to double check everything looks good before we go splashing glue about. With an acoustic guitar, the amount of glue you put on um, can make your life a lot easier or harder. The idea is to put just the right amount on to get a little bit of squeeze out all the way around. Um, I think I might even just use a couple of clips there as well. A couple of clips like that. Don't need a massive amount of clamping pressure. It just needs to be held firm whilst your whilst the glue dries. Um, so there we go, dry clamped. Now I don't have to take the clamps off completely, just to save time, I can just move them to there. Get rid of any excess glue. I think what I'll do is I'll do two at a time. making sure there's no glue, uh, no dust. Let's just put a bit of glue on. So uh, how much glue do you put on? About that much. Can they see that? Let's try that. About that much. Don't know why it whites out. There we go. What I do is I spread it with my finger a bit and then get the other one that I'm going to do. You can squidge them together and share the glue. If you put too much glue on, you can just take it off with the other one. That's what I do. And then you've got a nice even film on both pieces. Hard to show you that. Take my word for it. Plop them down in place. And if you just press nice and hard for a minute, so 90 seconds, or a minute, it starts to grab. It's what we call fast grab glue this. So it starts to grip pretty, pretty quickly. Of course, everything's well behaved until you start putting clamps on and then it becomes less well behaved. It will want to slide around all over the place. So you just have to be aware of that. Make sure it doesn't move too much. If you put the clamp on gently and then give it a wiggle, that will release any friction between the um, the clamp and the brace and it'll stop it dragging it or pushing it away. So you should be able to get it on in exactly the right place. Just like that. No need to rush or panic. But one, one, a good idea is to just keep going back to the ones you've done. Just check that it hasn't moved. Okay, looks good. We've got just a little bit of squeeze out all along. 
So let's do these two. So it's just something that you practice and you get better at. It's putting exactly the right amount of glue on. Worst thing you can do is just put not quite enough glue. So make sure you've got a nice yellow film. A nice thin yellow film of glue, nice thin film of glue with no dry spots. Put it in place, press it for a, until it starts to grab, it starts to, it stops sliding around so much and then you can gently put the clamps on. dragging the brace around so I'm just wiggling the clamp to release the tension there. Double check everything looks good. Yep. Put a slightly longer clamper on there. Last ones. Put too much glue on, you can always take it off with your finger like I just did. Drop it down in place. Oh, I've made a mistake there. I don't know if you can notice that. I've put the glue on the wrong face. You can see, you can see I've got my number there, look. I've put the glue on the wrong face. So yeah, I was just checking. Um, always a good idea, you've got to check yourself as you go. Check twice, cut once. And um, I was just looking at it and I noticed the grain was the wrong way. So just scrape the glue off. Just scrape the glue off with the blade there. And uh, try again. Easy done, especially with these small braces. It's easy to put the glue on the wrong face. And you end up gluing it on sideways. So make sure the glue's got to be sticking up vertical from the soundboard, 90 degrees. Um, so if, if anything does go really badly wrong with these braces, then um, what we do is we just carve them off. It's a pretty simple process to just carve them off with a chisel and replace them. But obviously we want to try and avoid that. Press nice and hard, try and get it to grab. There we go. Right, so that's the last clamp on. What I would need to do now is leave that for 20 minutes to dry before I clean off the glue and then um, shape the braces. So I'm pretty sure we're not going to get to that today because what's the time, Carol? It's at 25. 
25 past two and I've got a rake of questions. Wow, we've already taken up far too much of your time. So let's just do a few questions. Well, Mark, it's fine. They're all just sitting, they're stuffing their faces. They're eating. Oh, good. Is it I've just been time? regaled with all the different food that they're eating. OK, um, well, you're making me hungry I've, now. I've so. threatened to walk out. Let's get it done. <laughs> right, so you want some questions? Um, I, I might work backwards, actually, because one of the most recent questions is relevant to what you've just done. So Je Jerry Frezzi, um, who's on Early Morning Watch over in, um, I think he's in... Hi, Jerry. Colorado. He's still in bed. I know he's he is. Somewhere near Denver Road. Anyway, <laughs> um, he said, if it seems that the X braces reference all the other braces, so why don't you just glue them on first? Yeah, everybody thinks you should glue the X braces on first. Um, we actually glue the X braces on last. They are the very last ones to glue on. Um, it's because they we want them to fit so perfectly. So um, we glue the flat braces on first, and then what we're going to do is trim them until the X braces fit perfectly. So uh, yeah, I guess you'll have to watch the next one. Um, you'll have to tune in next time, Jerry, for that. Uh, Mike Abbott says you've still got one brace to clamp. Is that true? Oh yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Phew, Ricky Allen, if you're Who still watching, that? Is that, that Mike Abbott? Abbott. Cheers, Mick. <laughs> yeah, because he he did actually a ask a question earlier on, Mark, but I I ignored <laughs> it. I raised my eyebrow. He asked how long it needed to be dry clamped for. <laughs> Long as you words. like. <laughs> so, um, right, first of all, can we just say a massive well thank spotted. you, Mark? You need to say thank you to Ricky Allen uh, and Clint because they've also. Yeah, super... thanks to Ricky Allen, especially Clint. to Ricky Allen. Super and Clint have super oh, chat. Super chat. They've yeah. sent you some, money, some beer money, so that's really kind. Thank you very much. Um, uh, I think you should uh, also write the questions. Thanks, guys. Questions. Right, number crunch, uh, number crunch uh, ages ago asked um, when you're bracing, is it different bracing if you're using, if you're making a nylon string guitar as opposed to a steel string? Yes. So, again, a nylon string guitar, again, it's another completely different, to me, I think of it as a completely different instrument. Um, they're all in the same guitar family. They've all got six strings, or usually six strings, and, and about the same scale length. Um, so they are the guitar family, but the construction is completely different. So arch tops, flat tops, electric guitars, 335s, and... What was the last one? The last one. <laughs> what was it? 335s, arch tops. Acoustics? You, I don't know what the one we're just talking about now. I, I was doing the chat. What was the question? The question was... Oh, nylon, classical. Nylon, nylon string, classical sorry. guitars, yeah. Sorry. They're completely different. So, um, a classical has what we call a fan brace. Um, so if we go to the overheads, they have lots of small braces. They don't, um, they don't have such a big bridge plate. So a smaller bridge plate, and instead of X braces, they have, um, you've got your sound hole brace and then you've got fan braces. So they have five or more braces spread out along the back like that in a fan style. They go along there. One, two, three, four, five. Um, like that. D did you say why why they were different? Did I miss that? Sorry. So the reason they're different is because um, steel strings need a lot more strength, hence the X brace. Um, the fan brace design of the classical instruments is a lot more slender. Um, if you put steel strings on one of those guitars, you would destroy it. The tops are a lot thinner on a classical guitar. Everything's made thinner and more lightweight because there isn't as much um, strength required. Um, so you can build the whole thing lighter, make it more responsive for all those nylon strings. So yeah, again, it's another, I think it's a completely different instrument. And um, 
it's um, it's a subject for another course. So we should do a course on that um, where you can draw your own classical and, and build it because there are major differences. Um, don't join my course thinking that you can make a classical guitar because it's not the same. Maybe we'll, we'll, we'll get round to these. I mean, it took you it yeah, took a I'll, long, long time to make that acoustic I think, course. Um, maybe maybe a classical. Oh, that that will that will be coming actually, won't it? Because aren't aren't you? We have done. Yeah. We've made lots of classical guitars, and we've done them on the course as well, but not on the online course. The online course doesn't cover classical guitars. Um, but here in the workshop, in real life, we do do classical guitars as well. Okay. Okay, so, um, right, I was just checking, right, another question about bracing. Uh, Matt Tomon said, um, why, do you know why some older guitars have, he, he said, gauze at the X brace? Yes. Um, let me see if I can show you. Do I have a guitar with X braces on? Yeah. Okay, so I believe what you're talking about is here, you quite often see um, a piece of material glued on over. Um, yeah, it's basically it's to reinforce uh, this, this um, X brace joint, which is actually a half lap joint. So you will see some, some builders actually glue on a piece of wood over there. You'll see that if you look inside some guitars, um, I think Taylor, um, those kind of guitars have got a piece of wood glued over to strengthen it. But most guitars, especially older ones, um, the Martin style guitars, will actually have a piece of cloth glued over the X brace, over the half lap joint. It's just purely to stop it from, from um, the joint from popping if it gets a whack on the front. So, um, yeah, we always do that um, before we glue the back on. There's the, the, some point where we, we, we reinforce the half lap joint there with a piece of uh, just cloth, t shirt, old t shirt material, or um, sheet material for bed, as long as it's clean. Um. Can I, I've still got a couple of questions. So um, Mitch, Mitch is World Travel, he's in the workshop th today, and he asked, hey, Are you, do you do, um, over the internet, one-to-one -one sessions, he actually asked that, do you do Zoom or, or you know, can you do classes, to, you know, do you do stuff on Zoom? Well, it's funny you should say that. <laughs> <laughs> because we do indeed do one-to-one -one sessions. That is how um, me and Ricky designed this custom guitar that I'm building for him here we did a um, we did a one-to-one -one zoom session so um, if I'm building a guitar for you it used to be that you would come to the workshop and we would design it and I would ask you all the questions here but we realized we could do it just as well with the cameras on a zoom meeting and so now if I'm commissioned a guitar, we usually do a Zoom meeting. If, if the person can't make it to the workshop, and in the present situation, that's impossible, isn't it? So um, we're on full lockdown. So uh, everything's happening via Zoom meetings. Um, we can design a guitar. Or if you just want to question me for an hour <laughs> on wherever you are in your build, let's say you've got to a certain point and you get stuck or basically any questions um, to do with making guitars uh, I'm available for and if you go to guitarmaking.co.uk and go to the shop section that's where you can buy all the kit for the acoustic guitars and bits and bobs but you can also book a session there what's it called Carol? What the, your session? How do they book a session? Well, It's called a one-to-one -one. There's actually a one-to-one -one on, on the site, there's a one-to-one -one session. But if you want a full design session, that's called a design session. So we've got, we've made the distinction because not everybody wants to do a full design. Some people wanted to just talk to you like 
Bart um, in Holland, he wanted to talk to you um, about yeah. a build that he'd done and, and ask you detailed questions. Yeah. I think um, he was asking me questions about the design before he started building. He wanted to, to confirm some aspects of the design yeah. that he'd made. So. But he didn't, you didn't do a full drawing with him, whereas we have a, a full drawing yeah, design Bart had session. already done a drawing, and yeah. via the magic of the internet, I was able to check it out for him and make sure everything was going to work. Um, he had some questions about um, strength around the neck joint, I think it was, in particular. So any, if you've got any uh, particular questions, then that's one thing that you could definitely do. Where, where can they bookmark? This is guitarmaking.co.uk Oh, you put me off. <laughs> right, come on, Carol. Right. Okay, don't you give me that. So, nearly there. Um, nearly there. So, uh, right, back to a discussion that we had earlier about, with, but Pete Johnson was asking about, uh, you know, the, this thing about uh, arch top, semi-acoustic, acoustic thing. So what what uh, Peter and Rick were talking about in the in the chat was that some, they, that not all, um, oh, right, start again. Electric pickups in seemingly acoustic guitars that's what they're talking about um, and that there are some um guitars that you know a 335 has a block in it but there are some seemingly acoustic guitars that use electric pickups and they don't have the center block no right. okay. <laughs> now you're mixing up your the, well, mixing up your that, models. But they were saying that there's a 305. Anyway, what the point yes, is... Yes, there's lots of different styles of 335, that style of guitar. But I don't. they're not acoustic guitars. They're electro-acoustic, I suppose. And that is... If Mark, you want to be pedantic. That's what Peter, um, wanted, that's what Peter wants to build. But also, to... also, this kind of guitar with a pickup mm. is called an electro-acoustic guitar as well. Some people call it an electro-acoustic. So that may be why we got confused and mixed up. Um, yeah, I think what you're talking about then is a 335, which is a semi-hollow body. Hollow body guitar, usually laminated, usually with a solid centre strip, um, which the pickups are fitted into. Um, they don't all have the solid centre strip. Like I said, That's what they're talking there about. are different versions. Um, some have got a very small centre strip, which just connects the ends together, um, kind of like a brace. Um, yeah, but you will find 101 variations um, of all of these designs. So all I can really um, comment on is the, the, the trends and the, the most popular ones. Okay. Um... And also I've got to point out that I'm not a 335 builder. I've built flat tops, arch tops, bases, electrics, ukuleles, all kinds of stuff. Classical. All kinds salsa. of guitars. <laughs> but um, a 335 will be new to me. So when we do get round to the 335 build, um, it's going to be a new one on me. We haven't made 335s yet because it's a completely, completely different instrument, like I said, but also a completely different setup for building. As I said, it's laminated, so the first thing you're going to need is some way of laminating. And that's where that's where these come in. Bagpress.com. Our mate Darren. Um, so yeah. Right, okay. I'm uh, running out of steam, Carl. Yeah, okay, but there's, so there's one more one more question, right? One more question, then some comments, right? So, Matt Tomon says, what do you think sounds better, arch tops or acoustics? It depends on the style of music you would like to play. Um, they are completely different. As I said, the flat tops are really made for sustain and... Um, Great for playing chords, self accompaniment, also solo, solo finger pick style, um, rich harmonics and massive sounds, loads of reverb. Um, so quite versatile. An arch top guitar is a much more niche 
instrument. Uh, there's a much smaller population of the of the guitar playing world that can um, that can even get the most out of them. Um, you know, in in my experience, they they're made for people who play jazz, and they play a lot of notes very fast. What they don't want is all the notes getting in each other's way, and so they're not made for sustain. Um, Most jazz players, they don't play more than two or three notes at a time. Um, but they don't want the notes ringing on and getting in each other's way. So they're made, they're not made for sustain. It's a completely different instrument. And if you're into, like most mere mortals, just bashing away chords, accompanying yourself, then an archstock guitar is definitely not for you. Unless, you know, you particularly like that sound and you want to, that you're going to make that your your thing, you know. Um, there's something to be said for the using instruments out of context, you know, just to make it your thing. Um, but um, or if that particularly suits your style. But for the most part, um, arch tops are for jazzers who play a lot of very fast runs. Um, they want each note to get out of the way of the last one. Whereas flat top acoustic players tend to play big chords and they want it to ring out and sustain forever. So they are different, different, um, for different ball games, different instruments for different styles of music. So I would say um, you need to base, base what you're making on, on what it is that you play. And obviously I'm talking more about the acoustic sides. Um, as soon as you talk about putting electric guitar pickups in, then you're talking about electric guitars so it could be a semi-hollow electric guitar but to me it's not an acoustic guitar anymore it's an electric guitar if you're using electric guitar pickups so that's my two penneth worth well, your opinion might vary so mark that's all the main questions oh, there's a few things i need to uh, sort of announcements things i need to say and then we yes, can finish off there is that. okay so um i just want to well thank can you can we have carol cam no no, and I'll tell you why, because I realise I've got this jumper on oh, today. Oh, bad hair day. Now, there's two things. I've got a jumper that actually, uh, uh, on the camera, it looks like it's spinning. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, no, no, no. And also, can you not see, if I'm talking into the mic, I'm not actually on Carol Cam. Because I'm underneath it. Right, anyway, so... Sounds like excuses to me. Right, well... I told you, folks. Off. Right. They no. they all campaign to get you a camera. I know, but look. Look at the camera. Can you see the shot? No, I can't. Well, no, because I'm not even in it, because they, they also moaned about me not being loud enough, right? So, anyway... I can um, move the camera so it's pointing at you. No, not just right now. Thank you. So, um... Uh, I tried. Oh, God, he always interrupts me. I'm totally... What was I saying? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, there's a couple of things I need to say. Now, I'm, I wanted to thank a man called Dan, uh, Dan Jay. He, um, he emailed me this week and... Um, it, it was really good because um, he's he's joined as a premium member and he um, he's interested in building acoustic. But what he did say was that um, he he joined when he joined he was hoping that um, well he was he thought that in January we were going to um, draw lockdown Lucy and also put our prices up and that's partly why he joined kind of in a hurry. And he said he felt a bit disappointed that. Uh, that we haven't done either of those things and um and it was really good that he messaged us because obviously we're so busy you know lurching from one thing to the next because we're, we're just the two of us trying to do everything and i hadn't really hadn't really sort of thought of it from that point of view before so i'm here to tell you that um what we will be doing is that because of the problems with doing any kind of raffly type thing on youtube what we are going to do is we are going to um do it all on our forum um, and we will make an announcement tomorrow that's sunday um whatever the date is uh, tomorrow we'll, we'll announce tomorrow what is going to happen with lockdown lucy um and then it then that will that will be done so we, we're not breaking any of youtube's rules and uh so go to the the community the forum at guitarmaking.co.uk uh, and we'll put the, the information up tomorrow and then the other thing is that we did fully intend for there was going to be a price rise um to 22 pounds 
um, a, a, a month. Um, that was going to be originally from probably the end of January, but um, it needs the website changing, and we haven't. Um, that hasn't, you know, been finalised and sorted yet. So uh, it is coming. The web people are on it. Um, so I think we can probably say that it existing probably... members are going to continue paying existing the same. members yeah i was going to say that existing if, if whatever you've signed up as you you stay at that um but from from march i think it will be march if we say that then we're covered because february's a shorter month um it will be going up um and the other difference is that we decided that we were to try because the, the whole point of the supply shop when we set it up was not to we don't want to run a shop for goodness sakes the last thing i want to be doing is pack, packing boxes um but it was it was meant to be a sort of a service to help students get the right things easily and get wood that's ready to work um and so uh that's why we've tried to keep the costs as you know at a good at a good price and why premium members get discount um rather than putting up all the prices um in march the um what am I saying? The, the 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 discount to premium members will go down, but only for new members. So um, it's a way of trying to keep the the costs as low as possible, but without us losing money because obviously everything's gone up. There might be some price changes in the shop, but believe us, it's if, if it is, it's because the price has gone up to us because lots of imports now are changing. Um, so that's. Did, did we mention Brexit? So, uh, so uh, what I just want to say is that we are still having some problems with supplies of things, both going out and coming back. Um, poor Sven in uh, Sweden, he, he, his parcels, I've had such a nightmare with him. Some of it's my fault and I've sacked myself more than once. Um, but one of his parcels actually got returned this week. So that's got to go out again. Um, so bear with us, we're still only the two of us. Hopefully it won't be long before Lewis comes back. The last thing I want to say is that if you're a supporter, uh, one thing that might change in March is we might be doing away with the supporter membership, except for those people that, have, that want to carry on paying it. But we might have a different way of doing support for us, which isn't that. All right. So in essence, there will be a price rise. It's probably March. It, whatever you're paying now, you'll carry on paying and Lucy will, will tell you about it tomorrow. And then the very last thing that I want to tell you is I've had lots of people interested in the workshop courses. Robin asked a question earlier on, Mark, about, you know, if he if he came on a workshop course, um, does he have to make, you know, is it only one size of acoustic, for example? And obviously in the chat, I said, no, you know, it's it's when people come here, they build what they want. It's a custom you know, yeah, custom. we are hoping this year at some point when they let us to open back up again for workshop courses. If you come on a on a workshop course or if you're building it at home on the online course, you can make it whatever size you like. Um, I also have, um, I don't know, I've got about four or five different shapes for moulds, but you don't have to use a mould, as I've said, you can... You can do it all by hand. You can make it any shape or size that you like. So, so, and that goes for anything. And um, so, our courses. If you if you look, the courses have titles like build an electric or build a customer or whatever. But that's really just to give you a rough idea of, for example, how long it might take and what it might cost. But uh, um, anybody that's um, on the forum that's been here will tell you that obviously, basically, any changes to specs just add either time or money yeah obviously um, and that's all it's so going to cost you a bit more if you um if you choose more expensive parts but actually to be fair the, the shape and size of an acoustic won't you know that that no. won't unless you um, have something really big if it takes extra time or if it entails buying an extra piece of wood or part then obviously it's going to add to the price otherwise um you know you can make it any shape you want it doesn't affect the price so what the, so the last thing I wanted to say is that I have a list already of a, quite a, a, it's quite a sizable list of people who've already said that they would like to come here um, and build and they're, and they're you know deadly serious. We are, are hoping that we will be allowed to be open at some point this year. And so Mark and I have decided that uh, two things. One is that we, we we're not going to take any deposits. Um, uh, like we would normally what we're going to do is is uh set dates with people on the waiting list and reserve those 
dates um, and hope uh, that we are able to open again. And I think we're realistically looking at, you know, May, I would say, April or maybe at the earliest. Um, and that what we'll have to do, I think, this year for sure, if they allow us to open, is we're only going to be able to have small numbers, like really small numbers. So, for example, two maybe, and possibly even go down to one if we have to. Um, and uh, at the moment, we have several people on the list who want to come with a partner uh, or someone in their bubble all right so so what I'm saying is it please let us know if you're interested in genuinely interested in coming up here this year or possibly more importantly next year 2022 um, and we'll start trying to find good ways of doing it because we would love to have people back here and hopefully by then we will also have somewhere for people to stay because that's another plan that we've got Anyway, Mark's, Mark's bored of me talking now. So Lord thank you, Lord, everybody. Carol. Are you done? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we need something better for them to look at than my ugly face while you're talking. Yeah. Anyway, so... Um, the mic's so low, I can't see anything. Stop moaning. Right. Enough. Right, we're done. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, there isn't going to be time today to carve these braces, because... Carol's massive monologue. Oi! <laughs> but don't worry, because we'll get to it on Wednesday. So on Wednesday, I'm going to show you how we shape these braces. And, um, and we're going to start gluing on the curved braces. Okay. So, um, yeah, tune in to find out how all that happens. If you can't wait and you're, you're just... Uh, you just want to get stuck in, and I don't blame you. If you want the proper edited versions of all this, because what you're getting today is all the um, the waffle and and, uh, and the rubbish that comes out on the on the website, you it's get the edited itself. versions <laughs> where we've cut all the rubbish out, and you just get pure guitar making joy. <laughs> So um, yeah, if you um, if you haven't got the patience for all this, go to guitarmaking.co.uk yeah. and you get the the edited versions where you get all the information and none of the waffle. So and you also get to support us, and we very much appreciate it. So thank you very much to everybody who's joined today. You ready, Carol? Yeah, ready I'm enough. ready. Just remember, the most important thing in guitar making is to check twice and cut once. I'll see you on the forum. Here's the website address. See you there. <laughs> Any time today. No, it's not happening. Get it lined up and then just press spacebar. Well, oh, I'll have to come round there and do it myself. The train to Glasgow, changed to get to air Went down and played in the firehouse We played some music, I drank a little bit of Guinness We had a nice time, it was fun and Then after that, we drove back To Mark Billy's house He's a guitar man Yeah, he's a guitar man Makes nice guitars And if you ask him kindly and politely He'll say, come down to my place and we'll make a guitar the kind of guitar that you like I've seen some sort of hollow body stuff I've seen some sort of electrified guitars I've seen some sort of ukuleles I've seen all kinds of guitars I've been out there today I was out there today he did something cool with my guitar He sort of took the thing out Put it back in I felt like a real professional guitar player When he did it it was really cool and fun I liked it But I can't quite do it myself So you gotta get yourself a guitar maker man Who knows exactly what he's doing Mark Milley Mark Billy, he knows what he's doing. Making guitars, he made this guitar. I like this guitar, it plays nice. So if you want to make a guitar, or need to get a guitar, or so you need fixing, just go see the man, Mark Billy. Yeah. Raggy. <laughs>